The gun we're looking at today was resurrected from obscurity by a gun industry giant, but can it overcome the shortcomings of the past? Can it be as good as they say it is? The hype train stops here. We're gonna break it down into five key categories and give you everything you need to know on the Daniel Defense H9 in five minutes or less. Midwest Gunworks is a classic one-stop shop for everything gun, whether you need tools, accessories, or lead distribution devices. They've got it all. And if you're looking for that one part that you can't find anywhere else, try out their parts finder, which features a ton of brands and thousands of parts for all kinds of different guns. To learn more, head over to MidwestGunWorks.com. For build quality, this gun feels pretty solid in the hand. Nothing about it feels cheap. The finish is clean, everything feels tight. However, this is my second gun. When DD was planning the launch, they sent out a bunch of pistols to creators like me. Then they said, hey, we found an issue, please swap out the barrel, we're sending you a new one. Okay, no big deal. Then it was, hey, just send everything back, we're sending a new actual production gun. Okay, cool, I'm glad we're solving issues, but that doesn't feel to me like this gun is actually ready. That sounds like a rushed project. I should also mention, that we had sporadic malfunctions with the gun throughout our testing. It seemed to not have enough spring pressure to strip a round off the magazine. They were not always a full mag. Sometimes it was full, sometimes it was not when we were using the slide release. Because of those malfunctions, three out of five for build quality. Ergonomics. This is where things start to take a little bit of a turn for me and I start to ask questions. The H9 grip is kind of weird, and not weird in the way like Stuff and Things has that handshake grip for an AR. <laughs> I'm talking weird like it doesn't make sense. The front and back strap of the H9 have some fairly aggressive sort of texture lines in them. And then the G10 grip panels on the side are kind of the opposite in that they don't have enough texture. They also aren't big enough for my hands, and I don't have like gigantic hands, I have like adult hands. The grip, in my opinion, is both too short and too slim. I want chunkier grip panels, and I kind of want a small, like, flared magwell, something to put my pinky on. I do like that the thumb falls naturally into the dent where the takedown lever resides. I don't know, three out of five for ergonomics. The main feature here is the recoil system that has been moved downward in the gun. They brag about it, therefore having a low bore axis. Why well, shotguns like the Archon and the Alien? I mean, the Alien has the lowest bore axis on the market that I'm aware of, and this H9 just does not feel like those guns. There is nothing about the actual shooting experience that screams, this has a low bore axis, besides the way it looks. It looks like it does, it just doesn't shoot like it does. It also shifts the pick rail downward because of that, which can kind of be weird for running accessories, and I'm betting holster choices are kind of limited at the moment because it's still new. I don't know. I will also point out here that the trigger is weird. Instead of being hinged at the top, like every other handgun on the market, it has a trigger dingus that's hinged from the bottom. Like instead of going like this, it goes like this. So what I'm noticing and is kind of interesting is you don't notice how weird that trigger feels when you're dry fire. Like you're messing with it just dry fire and it feels weird, but when you're shooting, you don't really notice it at all. It just feels unnatural and I generally just don't like it. They say that they completely redesigned this gun. They tweak all kinds of stuff. And I think they struck out on the trigger. I, I like two out of five for features because none of them are landing for me. When it comes to practical accuracy or how accurate we can be with the gun, it started off tough for me. At 10 yards with the low. factory sights, we were consistently low. hitting low. Low, low, there you go. I don't know if that's because the sights are zeroed for 25 yards or something else was going on because it wasn't great. I don't know if it's me and the gun and the trigger and all that, like I don't know what stacking tolerances led to that, but that wasn't great. When we came back out to the range with the Laser Max Optic on there, the performance only improved slightly. All right, let's go look at them. There's my fist for comparison. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's go over here and check Ben's. There's my fist for comparison. He did go a little bit quicker than I did, but very similar group. I think it's a combo of the grip that's too small for me and a trigger that just isn't great. However, when we shot grips with it and really slowed down and tried, they weren't that bad. So I'll give it a three out of five. Now for the value section. Should you spend cash money on this gun? 
Well, the MSRP is $12.99. <laughs> that puts it in a higher tier of gun. The short answer is no, you shouldn't buy one. It's 15 rounds and it's like not, there's nothing about it that makes you need it. For that money, you could just flat out do better. There are better options for that money. This thing doesn't excel in any of the categories it tries to fight in. In my opinion, it's not a good carry gun because it's kind of heavy, and I'm more accurate with other guns, so I'm not going to carry it. It's not a good competition gun because it's too slim and doesn't have high enough round counts, there's no magwell, etc. The barrel's not long enough for me. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 for value. I, I just can't recommend this thing over anything else out there that it competes against. The total score here is 13 out of 25. Ouch. Oh, and the low bore axis recoil destroying hype that seems to be floating around about this gun is just flat out bull. That's flat. People are just flat out lying to you. You know, I'll tell you what, for how well, like this lower recoil system, you know, supposed to be like this fancy thing and make the gun shoot a lot different. It, fe it it's definitely recoiling different. It feels different, but it doesn't feel like world ending, world changing. It doesn't feel like most low bore axis guns. So for example, the CZ shoots way different than this. I 100% agree with you. It's a middle of the road gun at best and Daniel Defense can do better.